Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get the Nuka-Cola paint for the T-51B armor, and how to get into yet another one of those TNT domes over at the Black Mountain Ordnance Works. Uh, we're starting out here at the actual first leg of that journey to get into that dome, which is where that paint is located, well the schematic for that paint at least, and um, this location is Pylon V13. Uh, now I'm thinking that this could potentially be a site of some future content if Bethesda really wants to go this way. Uh, and I'll give you an explanation as to specifically what type of content that would be. And you can find that right here with this holotape. Professor Greebly's press release. People told me my theories weren't possible. They mocked me and called me a foolish old man. Well, I'm here to tell you that the possibility of time travel is not only real, Accomplished interdimensionally. I've revolutionized this radical concept, a new way of thinking about skipping across timelines. Instead of employing the traditional and often clumsy use of gravity for time travel, I've discovered a way to punch a hole in the fabric of our reality. By slipping through this fissure in time and space at a high rate of speed, it's my belief that instantaneous time travel will occur in a few weeks. I will be attempting to slipstream through dimensions using a monorail system as my chariot. If you wish to attend this historic event, I will be at Pylon V13 of the Appalachian monorail system. Be there and witness history. Now obviously this guy could just be a complete 100% crackpot, but at the same time Bethesda could use it to do some sort of time travel content here. But, that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is uh, on the ground, right over there, that. Specifically, what's in that bag. And uh, so let's head down there now. Again, we're heading northwest of the pylon. Okay, let's take a look at this note here on the stump. Rich Taylor's Testament. Whoever reads this, this is, as far as I can make it on foot. There aren't a lot of supplies in this area, and I can't walk much farther. Drink some water from a stream, and I think it was bad. My family was attacked by one of the research assistants from work. I thought I knew my people, but I guess you never know. She got my son before I managed to put her down. I never wanted to kill anybody, and I never wanted to die like this. If you get this note, tell my wife I loved her. Rich Taylor. Alright, and then this bag right here... The toolbox key. Yes, just like the alien blaster from the previous video, this is a chain of keys that is only tenuously connected by lore. So, let's see where that is. So, the t toolbox key opens a toolbox over here in Watoga. So, let's head over to Watoga. Alright, now this character is on the uh, white list of uh, people who are allowed in the town, meaning I do not get attacked by the robots. So I can ignore these guys and head right on over to what we're looking for. Now, uh, for landmarks, we got this Drumlin Diner right here. We're heading just to the northeast, right over this. And there it is. This is the toolbox we're looking for. Again, I can see the Drumlin Diner. I can see this big green building here the AMS building in the background and uh, here we go open with the toolbox key and we have key to Clara's box along with some other nice loot okay so Clara's box where is Clara's box Sutton now there is actually some lore that connects this next location to the following location which we will get to in just a moment but Sutton let's head there now All right, and here we are in Sutton on the south side of town, and we actually need to get to the north side, uh, but rather than go through the uh, scorched, congested middle of town, we're just going to walk right on around it. All right, and so this is what we're looking for right here, this case. This is Clara's box. Uh, there's a note there. We'll get to that in just a moment. Just looking at the map, I mean, it's... Not the best location in terms of landmarks, I guess, for 
two units north of the little Sutton thing, one unit west if we're all the way zoomed in, maybe three up, one to the left, something like that. Um, going off of the actual world and not just specifically the map. That's the Overseer's Childhood Home right there. There's a little trailer, again if you're coming in from the north. It's not the uh, house right there, or the house right there, that's probably actually just a garage over there. It's not the garage, or the house, it's this house right here, this red one. You go behind it, and it's this box right here within the doghouse. So, we got a note here. Clara's note to mom. Mom, I'm so sorry that my research got you addicted to this swill. I'll get revenge on the bastards in marketing that did this. I swear to you. I love you and miss you so much. Clara. Now, this is potentially Clara right here. Although, this is also potentially Clara's mom. As the swill she's referring to is Nuka-Cola, and we've got multiple Nuka-Cola bottles here around this uh, female corpse. Now, we'll open up the box. And we have a Nuka-Cola locker key. And I actually knew about this box, but what I uh, didn't know specifically where it was from when I was doing my first part of the transcription project where I was reading literally every single note. And I found a note referring to Clara taking this stuff from the Kanawa Nuka-Cola plant back to her home in Sutton. But I had never been able to find the box and I'd actually been somewhat disappointed thinking maybe Bethesda let me down and, and did not, uh, you know, expand on that little piece of lore where... Well, we'll read the note there in just a moment. So let's head there now. Kanama Nuka Cola Plant. All right, here we are outside the Nuka Cola Plant. Just head right in across the bridge. Take your first right. Take care of these ghouls. And head right into the front door. Okay, here we are in the lobby of the Nuka Cola plant. And uh, going right up these little stairs and into the main atrium here. Head on up these stairs. Okay, and specifically where we're going in here is to Snackability Research and Development. Okay, I can hear more of them around here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's some in here, that's right. Okay, we're gonna head right to this back room. Okay, and that takes care of that. So, we're just going to take a quick look around here because there's an important bit of information here in the current product status. Okay, so we have here the multiple products that they were testing at the time, and there's also safe control. Sea Lion, Walrus, First Seal, and Angry Beaver. Let's check these out. Alright, so now here's a minor issue. I don't know if we count this as a mistake Bethesda made or if Nuka-Cola made this mistake, but you notice here that once we enter the Sea Lion entry, it says Walrus for the product code name. Uh, and this is Nuka-Cola Quantum. It says here, current variant notes. Replace Strontium-85 with Strontium-90 because the synthesis process is too costly. The problem is Strontium-85 was supposed to be safe, whereas Strontium-90 is not. And that's something we're going to see through multiple entries here. Walrus. Again, this one also codenamed Walrus within the entry. Nuka-Cola Black, this is the coffee variant. Replace coffee base for dextromethamphetamine. Now, I don't know specifically what dextromethamphetamine is, but it doesn't sound good from the methamphetamine part of it. First seal. This is Nuka-Cola Orange. Use pear brandy as a flavor base. Cut intense aftertaste with trace arsenic. Now, arsenic is literally in everything that we eat and drink all the time but that doesn't mean that adding it to a product is a good idea. Angry Beaver. This is Nuka-Cola Quartz. 
Current variant notes, try adding non-soluble sugar flakes to simulate quartz and see if that counteracts the cavitation issues from previous versions. Now, I don't know if they were adding actual quartz or if they were adding so much sugar that it was literally dropping out of solution, but either way, that's not good. Okay, now that was important because of the next little note we're going to find back in here. I'm going to grab these quantums in this little metal box here. And this is Clara's note to Alexis, and this is where we get the information as to why that box was in Sutton. Alexis, I hope you can forgive me for this. I know we've had our differences over the years about methodology and R&D, but we've always agreed that marketing is an evil force in the new Coca-Cola world. I can't let them experiment on innocent bystanders, so I've taken the arsenic, mercury, and strontium-90 along with the rest of it and gone home to Sutton. Hoping you understand, Clara. So there is the lore as to why that box is in Sutton, and uh, she obviously had an issue with them uh, due to the fact that she blamed them for harming her mother as well, which uh, is understandable. Okay, we're going to head right back through here into this tasting area. And here is the locker that that key goes to, Nuka-Cola locker key. This again was the key that we got in Sutton. TNT Dome 3 key. Okay, so let's head on over to the Black Mountain Ordnance Works. Alright, here we are, the Black Mountain Ordnance Works. And we're going to stop into that guard room, just as we did last time, to check out what that entry says for Dome 3. Now, last time we were here for Dome 2, which was owned by Green Custom Defense Systems, and that's where we got the... Uh, plan to convert the alien blaster so that it uses fusion cells and we got some just general alien ammo for the gun should you not uh, choose to convert it. But let's head right on here on this computer here. Okay and we got Dome 3. Current owner Nuka-Cola Corporation. Lease term 12 years holding option to renew for an additional 25 years. Payment status? Full term paid. Okay. Alright, to get to Dome 3, we're going to take the most easily repeatable route, and that is to go straight back out onto the main road, turn north, and follow this north. We're going to take a right here, and again, be following another road. Alright, and when we get here to what looks like a little path, uh, let's take a look back over here. You can still see the bare bones buildings back over there. And we're going to follow this path up. And there it is. Now let's take a look at the map and see if we can pinpoint an easy point for you to see. Okay, not really. I mean, uh, basically we're to the left of all these little trees here, and to the south of these hills, and to the north of the road. Uh, not really a great point, like Dome 2 was right here between these two little hills and south of this gray rock. Uh, but anyway, let's open this up. Okay, and here we are in the Nuka-Cola Dome. Well, this is one of two Nuka-Cola Domes. Okay, so we have right here, Plan T-51 Power Armor Nuka-Cola Paint. And along with that, you get a uh, bottle on Cappy jacket and pants, and a Nuka World Geyser jacket and jeans, and some Nuka-Cola Quantum. Okay, and there's a uh, power armor station here. We may as well just try to apply this right here. Let's tell her this is the wrong power armor. I'll have to grab the T-51. And just so you know, I did not have a T-51 before I started making this video, and so I had to go out and spend a good four hours finding all the pieces of the T-51 armor I needed. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's use the uh, plan and start working on that paint. Alright, plan, T-51 Power Armor Nuka-Cola paint. And let's get to it. Alright, well, it looks like I screwed up a little bit and got a T60 left leg, but you get the idea of what we're looking at here. This is a nice looking paint job here. 
Uh, definitely one of the better ones that I've seen. And again, as <laughs> I apologize for the left leg there, but I literally did spend four hours traversing something like 20 different sites, constantly having to jump servers to try to find new pieces of armor. And I think this gives you an adequate view of what this armor does look like. And you got an idea of how it is you're supposed to get here. Alright. So, T-51 armor with a Nuka-Cola paint job. It looks pretty good. This has been the Resolute Cartographer. If you want to see more videos in this series on Fallout 76, hit the subscribe button. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me and I'll try to get back to you. If you want to get notifications as to when these videos become available, hit the notification bell. Hope to see everybody again next time. Thanks for watching.